Acts the 16th chapter, beloved, and we'll be reading for your hearing verses 6 through 10. And we're going to, I'm going to read out of the NIV, and typically you all know I do not read out of NIV for our text, but I'm just going to do it for clarity purposes on this morning. And when you find it, please signify by saying, Amen. 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 And here's where you'll find these words. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phasera and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mycenae, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Myasia and they went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man in Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. Oh, my God. And after Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Family, for a few brief moments, I want to talk to you from this subject. Don't forget your vision. Don't forget your vision. As we celebrate Black History Month, and it's not just a month, beloved. This is something that we should be celebrating 24-7. 365 days of the year. When we start thinking about our vision, it becomes easy to see that vision can become cloudy if you're not careful. If you're not careful, you will lose sight of the fact that your vision can get intermingled with others' Visions that lead to destruction along the way. Come on, y'all, fix me back now. Amen. When I start thinking of the vision that God has given me, it makes me understand that in the totality of vision, it means that you must understand what God is doing with others, but you need to also understand what he's doing with you. Michelle Obama had a famous quote that says, history has shown us that courage can be contagious and hope can take on a life of its own. Beloved, we have a responsibility to make sure that not only is the vision that God has given us is carried out, but others must understand that vision because if they don't, there's a possibility the vision that has been created can be lost. If we're not careful to make sure that the community message of inclusion is always broadcast in the vision, then we will lose very quickly whom we have become. And beloved, can I just share with you as you start falling asleep, that before you take your final snooze, remember this, that there are many who have set the boundaries and the foundational principles of community for all of us that we must adhere to. Community. In the book of Acts, whenever you see the Holy Spirit in action, he's always operating in the maximum. Someone say in the maximum. And then this is how we can tell, beloved, when we are truly in possession of the Holy Spirit because we don't allow minuscule things to become a part of our everyday lives. I don't know about you, but I've gotten to an age where I don't focus on the small things as it relates to the big things that God's doing in my life. I, I don't have enough time. I've realized that I got more years uh, behind me uh, than I have ahead of me. And so I got to start operating in the maximum as it relates to the things that God is doing in my life. Y'all talk back to me. Let's take an expository look at the passages of Scripture. Paul said in verse number six, and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word of the province of Asia. 
Charles Ryrie writes that Asia needed the gospel, but this was not God's time for them to get it. Discerning God's will, you have to move ahead and allow him to close doors until the right opportunity presents itself. When it comes to discerning God's will, did y'all hear that? You have to move ahead and allow him to close doors until the right opportunity presents itself. See, a lot have come in your way, but beloved, it's not until you're able to properly discern uh, what the Holy Spirit is doing in your life that tells you when to stop when to go and when to continue. There are some things that you may want to do today, but if the Holy Spirit has not shown you that that door is open, then the best thing for you to do is stop, get your instructions, get your assignment, and then when the Holy Spirit says it's time to go, then guess what, baby? You go ahead and go about that journey, but don't get caught up in not understanding what God is doing because you've lost your vision. See, this is why vision is so clear because vision is like a blueprint. Vision becomes your roadmap as you are progressing through life. And this is why, I'm, y'all know I'm a corporate man. I've been in corporate 29 years. All you all hear me talk about is a short plan, long plan, a, a three plan, a, a three, five year plan, a, a long term plan, smart goals, what's specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. That's my language. You know why? Because those are the things that keep me on track and keep me on course. Because no matter what Dwayne wants to do, if the Lord says it's not time to do it yet, guess what? It's just not time. And here's what happens to us. We get frustrated when God says not yet. He's saying not yet because there are some things that need to manifest before the door is open. And so we got to be okay with standing behind the closed door just waiting for it to open. Don't get out of line, family. Don't get out of line because this is the right line for you to be in. This is the right lane for you to be in. You just got to wait for the door to open. Tell your neighbor, wake them up and say, wait for the door to open. No, y'all didn't say it like you meant it. Wait for the door to open. You know why? Because right now, there might be some hate or some detest or there might be some hurtfulness behind the door and God behind the scenes is clearing it out and he's cleansing it out. So when you open the door, you're going to see blessings. You're going to see opportunity. You're going to see peace and you're going to see contentment. But you got to be okay with waiting behind the door because you can't see what's behind there. Tell your neighbor, you don't want want to see that right now. A lot of times, beloved, a lot of times the reason, uh, the reason that we struggle is because you won't surrender your own will. Y'all know how some of y'all are, it's either it's my way or it's no way. And God is saying, well, what about my way? You cannot depend on your feelings. Too many times we make decisions because we caught up in our feelings. And now you done lost something good because you was mad for too long. Some of y'all been mad at me since I got here in 2005. I tell y'all, you keep on being mad. Maybe that's keeping you younger because it's so helping me. Hey Amen, somebody. Watch this, and then it was so. So you got to surrender your own will. You got to uh, do not p- depend on your feelings, and then third, you got to seek the Spirit's will through God's word. Man, I want to know uh, what God has for me. Huh? I, I, I mean, I, I don't want to just wake up with my own agenda, right? I want to wake up and say, uh, Lord, what is it that you have for me today, right? Because I know that when I allow myself to seek the Spirit through God's will, then God's going to be happy with my way and my walk. Then the next thing you got to do is pray. You have to 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 pray. Do I need to say it another way? Hey, hey, you better pray. 
right? Because prayer becomes the essential uh, conductor that allows the blessings when they go up, they go up one way. And when they come down, they come down another way. But you know how they're doing it? They're doing it through the hand and through the word and the will of God. And so the same way he sends up, you send up petitions. It's the same way he sends down blessings. But you got to make sure that you pray. In everything you do, whether it's a big decision, whether it's a small decision, you got to pray. Whether it's something that's long term, whether it's short term, you got to pray. Whether it's a big deal to you and a small deal to somebody else, you got to pray. And you know why? Because at the end of the day, I've come to realize that prayer does change things. The effectual. Fervent prayers of the righteous does what? Availeth much. Did y'all see how my bottle fell straight down? See, that's that skill. That's called skill in the pulpit. And then what? Don't listen to them, God. I don't I know you don't even know most of them, right? Um, then the next the last thing, the last thing, the last thing you gotta do is wait. Somebody say wait. Tell your name, you gotta wait. Mm. Oh my God. You mean to tell me that I gotta surrender my will? I gotta not work in my feelings? I gotta seek the spirit of God's will through his word? I gotta pray? And then, Pastor, you saying on top of that, I also got to wait. You know why you got to wait? Because you got to wait for that prayer to be answered. That's why you got to wait. And you got to wait until his will is revealed through his word. That's why you got to wait. You got to wait till your feelings change from you being mad, hurt, and upset to you being able to be agreeable and peaceable and dealable. That's why you got to wait. And then finally, you got to wait because you need to get out of your own will and out of your own way and go into God's will and do it God's way. Did you see how I talked about it from front to back and then I talked about it from back to front? So no matter how you do these things, you better do them in some order. But at the end of the day, if you learn how to wait on God, God's going to open doors. God's going to oh, oh when you learn how to wait and you learn how to wait patiently and then and the Bible teaches us that we can't just wait but guess what Jermaine we got to we got to work while we wait why for night cometh when no man can work see you know what I'm doing while I'm waiting I'm waiting and I'm listening what I'm doing while I'm waiting, I'm waiting and I'm seeing. I'm waiting and I'm observing. I'm waiting and I'm watching. Because in order for me to really get my instructions, I got to hear him clearly. Verse 7, y'all, I've been on that too long. Verse 7 says, and when they came to the board of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed Mysia, Mysia y'all, excuse me, it depends on what side of the, uh, what, 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 what school you were taught in, and went to Troas. Watch this. Swindoll says, rather than write off their unfortunate situations, as coincidental, they recognized the sovereign hand of God guiding them where he wanted them to go. It takes a spirit sensitive to the Lord's leading to maintain this kind of perspective. And see, we naturally tend to wonder or wonder what's wrong or what's going on when we're trying to do something for God. And that thing just don't turn out the way we think it should. And, and we start wondering, God, what is it that I'm not doing? God is saying, it's nothing that you're not doing. It's just not ready yet. It's not ready yet. Having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia, how the Holy Spirit forbade Paul, Silas, and Timothy is not specifically stated. The phrase, the word in this context indicates the gospel. Somehow the spirit told the missionaries not to preach the gospel in these regions at this time. Doesn't mean that the gospel wasn't needed. 
Even though the gospel was good, it just wasn't good for the Asian folk at that moment. You know why? Because sometimes you can have the best intentions, but it's not about your timing. It's about God's timing. And, and this is why we have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, because sometimes some of us have moved because we had good intentions, right? We felt like we prayed about that thing. We felt like we waited on that thing. But the one thing we did not do was get clarity from the Holy Spirit when he said it's time to either wait or to stop or to go or to Continue and beloved, when you learn how to hear from the Spirit of God, you will find yourself never backtracking or retreating. Let's let's be honest. Let's just have a let's just have a, a, a non-Jesus moment for a minute. How many of us are in here, man or woman, enough to admit that there's a lot of things you did in your life that didn't get no traction whatsoever? You found yourself Spinning Congresswoman, I don't want you to put your hand up because that means we in trouble in the 11th district. <laughs> you find yourself just spinning your wheels, right? It's just like that vehicle. Y'all ever been snuck in the snow? I'm speaking to some Northeast Ohio folk. You know how you stuck in the snow? And you stuck in the snow and, and your wheels just spinning away? And you throw it <laughs> in, in reverse because you're trying to get some traction going backwards. And you realize that if you just throw it in, uh, in drive, then you can try to get some, some traction. Because really what you're trying to do is you're trying to rock the car uh, uh, long enough in order for you to get some traction. And, and, and if you just uh, be not so spiritual for a moment, can a lot of you just admit that that's how your life has been going for the last few years? You've been just spinning and, and you've been going backwards and you've been going forward and you You've been going backwards and then you're going forwards, you're going, you're going backwards, then you're going forwards and you're just spinning and you're not getting any traction. And it's not until somebody come with some wisdom and say, hold on a minute, hold on, I got a better solution. Let me put something uh, like a piece of towel or, or a piece of carpet is what we would use. And I'm going to put this right under the wheel of your tire and I want you to move forward when I say move forward. And when they put that small piece of carpet in front of your tire, it gave you just enough traction so that you can move move forward. Well, how many of you know today, beloved, that sometimes the Holy Spirit is saying, hey, right, wait a minute before you burn your gears out. How about you let me get in front of you? And how about you let me guide you? And how about you let me lead you? And I'm going to make sure that you get some traction so that you can get out of your stuck situation. Oh, I'm preaching if you're listening. Don't get mad about your situation. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you some guidance. Ah. You have to be okay with admitting you've been spinning your wheels for a minute. You know, the first way that you get help is to admit that there's a problem. The only thing wrong with cloudy vision is you're not trying to get it clear. Operating in the maximum opposed to operating the minimum. I've shared with you that in the book of Acts, we see the Holy Spirit operating at maximum capacity. And because I live with a sense of urgency now, I just don't have time to waste time. Beloved, time is one of those precious entities that you can never, ever get back. When soon as this service is over, guess what? We won't have this service ever again. And that's a portion of time that has been gone. And this is why I struggle when folk come into the church and they sit there like they're mad uh, about the word of God. They're mad about the worship. They're mad at the people. Don't you know, beloved, you'll never get this time back. And right now you should be rejoicing. You should be shouting. You should be celebrating because when you leave here, you don't know what the enemy has in store for you. And so God is saying, why don't you celebrate the moment that you got right now? And this is why the writer says, give us 
us this day our daily bread because you got enough going on today that you shouldn't be focused about what may happen on tomorrow. All I know, family, is I got my sister today and I'm going to preach like I'm not going to live after this moment. You know why? Because this is all I got is right now and we got to start living in the moment with a sense of urgency because tomorrow is not promised. Tell your neighbor, live for right now and get your vision clear right now. Man, listen, listen, if I wasn't in this pulpit preaching, I'd be running through these aisles shouting right now because I was in so much pain yesterday. Uh, Tier, let me tell you, so I was in so much pain that I could barely walk yesterday. We went by to go see Deacon and Sister Harris and I was walking like the hunchback of Notre Dame. Y'all must think I'm not telling the truth. I could barely stand up. But right now, if I had to, I'd jump clean out this pulpit and I'd run through this church in, in my mind. Now, I still know better because the Bible says, do not tempt the Lord thy God. But, but in my mind, I'm running through this place. Y'all help me, somebody. You, you can't see supernatural things when you're operating in a natural perspective. Do you know the most blessed folk in life are blessed because they don't operate in the natural, they operate in the spiritual? You got to see exceedingly and abundantly versus minor and minuscule. I, I won't surround myself with people who won't dream. If you're not willing to dream, I don't need you around me. If you're not willing, uh, if you're not willing to be transparent enough to lay yourself at the feet of Jesus and dream, then I, I don't need you around me. See, I need folk who have enough faith in God that they dream about the things that God is doing because they know that when it leaves that dream world and it enters into your mind and it becomes a part of your faith wall, that there's nothing that you won't believe God for. See, the dreamers are the ones who speak things that you don't even understand. You know why? Because they're speaking about something that they want to happen or they're believing God's going to do something they haven't seen yet. So whether you call yourself a dreamer walker or a faith walker that's really up to you but I need folk to be around me that's going to talk about what we getting ready to do not talk about what we used to do because I need to be walking in the things God is doing right now because it's getting ready to take me into my destiny and I'm not thinking about what happened back here I need to see what's getting ready to go on right now See, vision becomes very unclear when you talk about people who lack a lot of purpose, right? You ever talk to somebody and, and two minutes into the conversation, you realize this man, I ain't out. Y'all almost made me cuss. I ain't got time to be listening to nothing you talking about. You, you talking crazy. You, you ain't talking about dreams. You're not talking about hope. You're not talking about faith. You talking about what we used to do. And how about you do this? How about you go back to where we was? And you go back by yourself. Because I'm not going back there with you. I'm, I'm moving ahead. I'm about big stuff. About big things. Yeah. Unapologetic. Yeah, say it. You know, when you start getting older, those verbs and those synonyms and homonyms and antecedents, they don't roll off your tongue the way they used to. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I'm about big things. I'm about big praise. I'm about big worship. I'm about big ideas. I'm about big budgets. I'm about big dreams. I'm about a big God, a big Jesus that does exceedingly and abundantly. I'm about big things. And if you ain't about big things, I need you to get away from me. 
because I don't need you to cloud the vision as God's getting ready to rain down in my life. I don't need you clouding the vision that he has for me. Watch this. Vision should be unveiled, not unraveled. You got too many people as God's trying to unveil it. They're trying to unravel it. Don't be around folk that's unraveling the vision that God has rolled out to you. Be around folk that say, I agree with you. I agree with what God is doing in your life. Because at the end of the day, beloved, it's all about agreement. Tell your neighbor, this thing is about agreement. <laughs> Quit quitting on the vision before it has a chance to be developed. Quit quitting on the vision before I have a chance to be developed. I know some of y'all need a little, little hooked on fox, whatever. You know what's so crazy? If T.D. Jakes was preaching this same word right here, do you know most of you would be jumping out your seat, you'd be slobbing in the mouth, you'd be running through the chairs, you'd be knocking folk over. You know why? You, you, don't, you don't appreciate the mailman, you know, because you get so used to the mailman, the mailman becomes a common figure in your life, and so you don't get excited about the word, but you let somebody who got 20,000 members come preach the same thing, you shouting, you slobbering, but family, I need you to know today that you getting the best that God has given us and that, that that's what every male man that's true about their business and so don't ever get caught up in the person but get caught up in the message when my preacher preached to me about vision man I get to sweating my clothes get to filtering you know why because when you start speaking about something greater in my life I'm gonna get excited I'm ready to run I'm Give me three more minutes. Give me three more minutes. I, I thank God that some of our visionary pioneers didn't quit before their vision came to pass. Man, I think about Madam C.J. Walker. If she would have quit, do you know what some of y'all heads would be looking like right now? <laughs> Since y'all want to look at me crazy, I'm talking about you crazy. Listen, I know I got a little jest for me going on up top, so I'm talking about me too. Imagine if Mary Van Britten Brown would have quit on her vision. She created the first home security system. Imagine if she'd have quit, all our stuff would be gone out of our houses today. Imagine if Garrett Brown would have quit on his vision. Y'all think we see accidents on Kansas now? <laughs> Can you write that down so I tell get that fixed for me? <laughs> when God gives you a vision, there's things that has to happen at his pace, not at your pace. And you gotta be okay when the vision doesn't come to pass as soon as you think it is. Your blueprint does not dictate God's moving. Don't forget your vision. Y'all give me about two more minutes as we take through verse number nine. Y'all know when we preach expositorily, we got to get to the meat of the word. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. Somebody say, come help us. How many of you know that sometimes you have so much going on in the day? that the only way God can really speak to you is at night. Any of you ever been woken up in the middle of the night and you keep asking, Lord, why, why are you waking me up in the middle of the night? You know why he's waking you up, Dwayne? Because he can't get your attention in the daytime. Because your mind is all over the place. You're thinking about everything other than hearing from God. And he's saying that sometimes I got to speak to you at night. Because that's the only time you slow down long enough to let me be a part of your life. Tell your neighbor, you need to slow down and hear God. So the Bible declared, the Bible, the Bible declared that a vision appeared to Paul in the night. As described below, God used visions at several strategic points in the book of Acts. One was when instrumental in Paul's conversion, y'all remember that. And another pair of visions uh, was instrumental in opening the gospel to the Gentiles. 
and we remember that. But this on this third time uh, was when God was using to fling open the door and spread uh, gospel all throughout the region of Europe. Family, the reason they couldn't go to Asia at that time is because uh, the Holy Spirit needed them to go over to Macedonia because there was a word that was getting ready to be necessary over in that missionary field. And sometimes even, and you know about this, Jermaine, you may have good intentions and you may want to do what you feel you need to do, but there's somebody else that's crying for help over here that's not getting the attention that they need. See, these folk over here, they've been okay for a long time, but these folk over here are in a drought. And if you ever start looking for the folk that really need help and you start focusing on them sometimes, beloved, we want to sometimes, we, oh my God, yo, I can't even get through this thing because it's so good to me. Because sometimes, Carlton, we only want to go to the folk we comfortable with or we only want to witness to the people that look like us or we only want to go in places that we comfortable but how many of you know sometimes the Holy Spirit will call you to somebody that's going to make you feel uncomfortable these folks saved over here but what about this homeless population this homeless community I know they may not smell like you but guess what they need the gospel just like everybody else But before you go, Keisha, you better have good vision because you can't expand on what you can't expound. And too many of us, we go on to folk thinking that we got a message and we really don't. Too many of us getting in folk faces talking about you need to do this and you need to do that. But that's not what God is saying. Don't you go and try to expound and you don't even know how to expand. I, I wish I had about three or four folk that's ready to sit down and learn the word of God before you start trying to be a missionary giving the testimony. I need some folk in here today that don't mind digging in the word of God and getting yourself ready for your next journey. Tell your neighbor I'm getting ready for the journey. Paul had a team that was willing to follow the vision because of his success that he had with the Holy Spirit in the past. The reason I like to be around seasoned folk is because I know they got experience with God. They got experience with the Holy Spirit. And guess what? They're going to help me. They're going to help me help somebody. You can't be mad when people won't follow a vision that you can't explain. People will make decisions based on your experiences, and if you're all over the place, you can't expect them folk to follow you. Don't forget the vision. That's last verse. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Paul and his companions realized that as much as they wanted to go to Asia, the God that we serve had told them that Asia was not your place. But I need you to get ready to go to Macedonia because there's somebody in Macedonia that when you get that word to them, they're going to make that word move mightier than anybody in Asia ever could. I wish I could tell the story a little bit differently, but time won't allow me to unpack it. But what we see, once again, is the Holy Spirit moving at maximum capacity. Somebody say Paul had a new, call. a new call. When he said, when he heard come over to Macedonia and help us, it now became plain to why the Holy Spirit had been closing other doors in his face. Macedonia needed the help that Paul, Silas, and the rest of the apostles of the cross of Christ was able to give. Family, what I need you to understand is that the reason some of the doors, oh my God, has been closed in your life uh, is because God has some other doors uh, that he needed open. <laughs> and, and it wasn't about what you wanted, uh, but it was about what God needed out of your life. So I need you to understand that don't get mad when things begin to close and shut down. That's just God saying that I got something way better than you could ever think of or ask. Uh, oh my God. The Bible teaches us to speak those things that be as if though they were. There are some things that God is getting ready to reveal. He's getting ready to open up. He's getting ready to unleash. He's getting ready to unlock. 
He's getting ready to allow you to see something that you've never seen before. If you step out on have enough faith, God's getting ready to send increase in your territory like never before. But you got to believe it for yourself. Stop waiting on somebody to pump you and prime you. But say, I got enough experience with God that I'm getting ready to do this just me and him. Somebody say immediate call. It became an immediate call to an immediate response. See, when God tells you to do something, stop looking for validation somewhere else, but make sure that you're in the will of God and you will hear plainly and clearly from God. Can I help y'all for a few minutes? The reason a lot of us struggle is because once we've gotten the assignment and we've gotten what God has in store for us, we got to go and ask somebody else. Do you think this is what God means? Do, do you think that this is what he wants for my life? Do, do you think that this is what God is saying? Now, that's okay if you're not in the will of God and you don't know God for yourself. But when you know God and you got experience with God and you can check the track record with God and you can say, when I listened to him in the past, he opened doors back then. When I listened to him again, he did it again. And when I just had enough faith not to doubt, him. He just step out because he said so. He opened doors that no man could shut. Stop waiting on validation from somebody else, but step out with enough faith to know that if God said it, then I believe it. And then the last thing, my brothers and my sisters. Is you'll start to see some blessed results. Opportunity, and then they became your opposition. When God opens doors, He's making major moves. But you have to be okay with stepping out into the vision long enough to let it come to pass. They were not finding what they needed. Because Paul had gotten so busy that he couldn't hear the man's cry himself, but he heard the Holy Spirit. And Tommy, when he heard the Spirit of God say, go, he wins. And Deidre, I need you to know today that when he says go, you don't need to hear from me. We don't need to ask our neighbor. We don't need further validation. When you're in the will of God, step out on faith. Y'all just do this for me. Just do this. No, no, do this, please. See, this is God expanding your territory. This is God increasing your faith. This is God increasing your favor. This is God enlarging your territory. This is God making ways out of no way. But see, the thing is, you got to believe it. Man, when I believe here, when I leave this place, I know that everything that God has for me is going to be for me. And no devil in hell can abort the mission that God has started in my life. 